Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, we'd like to start by thanking all of you for taking the time to watch this video, and hopefully you'll learn something by the end of this. I'll be giving away three copies of this book written by Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, Diary of an American Exorcist, to three selected people. Find out how you can get this book for free at the end of this video. Anyway, before we carry on, I'd like to share a couple of channels that you might like to subscribe for their fantastic contents and provide you with lots of valuable information about our faith. Number one. Hey everybody, welcome to the Census of Fidelium. This is a Catholic channel that does interviews, book reviews, podcasts, and makes videos of sermons into a slideshow feature so that more sense are activated to increase learning. For those of you who especially love listening to Father Chad Ripperger, this is the channel that you must subscribe. Number two, patristic pillars run by our brother in faith, William Albrecht. Actually, I'm helping him out a lot by designing his video thumbnails when I can because he's providing a lot of valuable contents on Christian apologetics, especially about the history of the church. I noticed that a lot of these type of channels that provide lots of really good information have low views, so I'll try to highlight more of these type of channels from time to time in my videos. If you guys have the time, do check these channels out and see for yourself. The links to their channels are in the description box below, so feel free to check it out. Now, buckle up and let's get right on the subject of this video then. The Exorcist, Monsignor Stephen Rossetti once shared about a group that invited demons into their bodies in order to convert them. And I noticed several comments in this channel too, that are saying, probably the devil and his demons will repent one day, regretting their decision for turning their backs on God. The truth is, they cannot. The church is very clear on this. And so anyway, Monsignor Rossetti was in the midst of an exorcism, and the demons were suffering greatly as a result of the prayers. He later commanded the demons to answer, did you make a bad choice rejecting God? And the demons answered reluctantly, yes. He then asked, are you suffering because of it? Again, the demons reluctantly replied, yes. So would you change your choice if you could? No, the demons answered. That is an example of the sickness of evil and sin. They know they made a bad choice, but still wouldn't change it. Demons cannot be converted. So to all those in deliverance ministry, Monsignor advised them, don't try. Don't try to convince them of the truth. At times, he will force these demons to tell the truth. For example, he will command them to answer, whose death and resurrection smashed the devil's kingdom. And the demons will respond only under duress, Jesus. During exorcisms, the exorcists will pour the truth down their throats, but they cannot convert them because the demons are lost forever. Monsignor Rossetti and his team were, were in the process of exorcising the last demon out of a person, and while manifesting, the possessed individual looked up and got a worried look. So the exorcist commanded the demon to tell him why it was not leaving, and the demon said, The others will beat me up. They are calling me a coward. Clearly, the demon was frightened, and this particular incident reminded Monsignor Rossetti of a case they had a few years ago. As the demons were weakening, they were starting to answer his questions, and when demons start being obedient to the exorcist, then you know they are weakening and close to leaving. As he pumped the demons for helpful information on how many demons were left, what were the names of the leaders, and other pertinent info, the demons tried to stop answering. But when the exorcist demanded to know why, the highest ranking among the demons possessing the individual said, the others will beat me up. They are already angry about me giving this information. Some mystics have had visions of hell and noted that demons beat up the humans in hell. It's massively ugly. But what they haven't seen is that demons beat each other up too. Demons maintain their strict angelic hierarchy in hell and demand slavish subservience from lower-ranking demons. They do so by threats and beatings, even among their own kind. That's why it's important to remember that hell is not a democracy. It is a place of slavish torture and violence. It's all the demons know. It is who they are. Isn't it somewhat ironic? They wouldn't obey God who loves them, so now they are slaves to Satan and their demonic masters who only know how to hate and punish. One time, Monsignor Rossetti was having lunch with one of their gifted ladies, and this particular person has the gift of actually seeing demons. The plates of food were placed by the server in front of them, but she did not start eating, and it was noticeable. Finally, she looked up and said, Aren't you going to bless the food? By her demeanor, he knew something was up, so he asked, Something wrong with the food? She nodded but said nothing. Are there some demons on it? Yes, she replied. And so Monsignor Rossetti gave the typical blessing over a meal, and she said the demons quickly left. But again, when the dessert came out, she again hesitated. 
He asked again, Are there demons on this too? And again she said, Yes. This time he made her say the blessing instead and the demons left. But this particular incident did make him wonder what was going on in the kitchen. This was a rare occurrence that she saw them on the food. He wondered if one of the kitchen staff was cursing the food before it went out. This might seem odd, but Monsignor Rossetti has found out that there are more people cursing things and engaged in occult practices than he would have expected. If they had eaten the food with the demons on it, he doesn't know for sure what would have happened. No doubt it wouldn't have been pleasant. He probably would have chalked it all up to indigestion or something. But here's the moral of the story. Be a bit more diligent about blessing meals before we eat them. Who wants to eat a demon anyway? During one conference for exorcists, Monsignor Rossetti was speaking about a difficult case they had encountered in the past. At one point in the almost two-year exorcism, a personality came forward and said its name was Judas. He commanded to know whether it was a demon using the name or really the person of Judas who betrayed Jesus. He shouted, with a tinge of shame, that he was the human person. While some debate whether fallen souls can inhabit a possessed person, other exorcists have told him that they too have encountered Judas the fallen disciple. Although it is not an article of faith, the Bible gives one the impression that Judas is indeed in hell. During the conference, Monsignor Rossetti recalled how difficult it was to cast out Judas. Other high-ranking demons were exorcised more easily. It seemed that Judas was impervious to the rite of exorcism, holy water, and just about everything else they tried. Finally, Mary herself came, according to the possessed person, and cast out Judas. But why were Monsignor and his team were having such difficulty with a lowly human being when they were able to cast out powerful demons in Jesus' name? One of the other participants at the conference said their team had the same problem with Judas, but they then realized that Jesus gave to his disciples his authority to cast out demons, but not to cast out fallen human beings. The exorcists simply had no authority over Judas. Fortunately, the mother of Jesus came and cast him out herself. She knew they needed the help. At the conference, according to Monsignor Rossetti, it was striking how similar were the experiences of exorcists in different places on this point and many others. They all found the commonality of their experiences to be very affirming. Monsignor Rossetti was in the midst of an exorcism session when the possessed victim leaped up and attacked him. According to him, that has happened before, but it is unusual. Normally there is a kind of spiritual bubble around the exorcist because God does not let them physically attack the exorcist during a session. However, during that particular exorcism, he received a lot of verbal abuse from the demons and they tried to get into his head. Fortunately, the possessed person was not physically strong, being rather petite, but it took a couple of team members to contain her. No doubt some demonic strength was in her. Monsignor Rossetti got angry when she attacked him and he gripped her arm tightly, although he didn't show the anger on the outside. Nonetheless, the demon's voice chided him for losing his temper because they never miss an opportunity to diss the exorcist. Sure enough, as they continued the session, the demons stopped reacting and seemed nonplussed by the whole thing. Something was wrong. So Monsignor Rossetti stopped the session, went into the other room with one of the priests, and confessed the sin of losing his temper. The priest absolved him, and they went back into the session. Once again, the demons started to react to the prayers. Apparently, the demons were feeding off his anger, and it turned out to be a good reminder for him that he should confess any unhealed anger before entering a session and to also not letting the demons provoke him. Now for those of you who are interested too well, when the book written by Monsignor Rossetti, Diary of an American Exorcist, all you have to do is simply comment on this video. I'll announce the three selected people on June 25th, so don't miss out. Well, that's it for this video, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch until the end. Hopefully you've learned a lot from this, and until next time, again, thank you so much, and God bless you.